What's going on guys? Welcome back to your Lake Fort Guide. Hey, today we're going to break down the Lowrance Active Target System. We're going to give you the settings that I'm using. We're going to give you the how to use it to catch big bass. And oh yeah, we're going to give you an honest review. So y'all stay tuned. Got him. Got him. Yeah, I'm watching me right on top of the bus on that last. Well, guys, like I said, we're going to be showing you guys everything there is to show about the active target. I got my buddy, Johnny Maxfield. Y'all seen him before. He talks a lot of trash. Last couple times he lost the big bass bet. That's all I know. Well, that's because you, uh, get ready. Here it comes. Put a time frame on it. As soon as you catch a big fish, we leave. Well, I would never, <laughs> I would never. So actually we're out here on our top secret hole that we come to back in the day. If you guys remember, if you've been watching long enough back in the winter, we broke down the Garmin live scope and the Humminbird 360 on this same lake. It's really close to my house. Uh, John also lives right down the road from here. So we like coming here. It's a good lake, got a lot of fish, got some cool structure to look at on your electronics. So it's a great place to come test electronics like that. So we came back to the same exact lake. That way it's like an even, like a scientific thing, right? It's like a constant. I don't know the scientific terms. We just do it on the same lake so you guys can see the same structure. If you want to go back and look at those other videos, I'll link them below and you can see the same structure on all three systems, Humminbird 360, Garmin LiveScope, and today, Lawrence Active Target. We'll be fishing brush piles and rock piles offshore. Well, not so much offshore, but a little bit deeper where you can see the structures. But here's the thing. This is a different time of year. We did that back in the winter when all the fish were kind of out of the shallow, shallow water. We've now kind of come over into the fall transition. I mean, in a big way, the water temps have really cooled off the last week or two. And there's a lot of bait up shallow. We're seeing active right now. You can see that ring out there maybe. There's bait flicking all around us. So before we get onto the Lawrence Active Target stuff, I think what we're gonna do is get up here in some of this skinny water and just pitch and flip around, maybe throw a top water or a swim bait or something, who knows. We're just gonna pitch and flip, run around up shallow, see what we can catch up shallow. And as soon as we, that bite ends and you guys will just see some fish catches, after that, we're gonna go out off the bank, go look at that structure, show you guys how the Lawrence Active Target works. And at the end of the video, walk you through all the settings, walk you through my honest review. I've been using the Active Target for a while now. Uh, I've got my hands on experience with it a little bit out on Lake Fork and many other lakes. So we're gonna give you guys all the details you wanna know about Lawrence Active Target. John, you look like you are about ready to slap me from talking too long. I'm ready to fish, man. Hold on, ready to go. <laughs> all right, here we go. Like, I don't know how many it's gonna take to whoop me, but I know how many they're gonna use. <laughs> Isn't that what old Ron White said? Wow. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family channel, Maxfield. Dig out his butthole then. I will say the last few times I've been coming out here. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Look at that. It's barely in the lip. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Just a cute little sucker. But you know what? I caught one before you did, chump. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty small right there, but there's been some other fish that looked bass size on there. Got him. Got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that looks bass sized. <laughs> Good job, Johnny. Johnny boy. All right, folks, what we're showing you, this is a tree, and that's the tree right there. And you see there's a little stick beside it. And you see one fish, one fish, two fish, three. Like, there's a couple fish that are kind of hanging out at the base tree. There's one that just flashed in right here. These are like the one John just caught. That size is right there. That's like the one John just caught. There's two more out there, John. There's a big one out there right now, even bigger, looks like. But y'all can see them fish kind of sitting right between us and that tree. And John just set the hook right on the front side, right in front of that tree, didn't you, John? Yep. There goes my crankbait. See my crankbait going across the screen? Oh, I hit the stump or something. There's my crankbait. Y'all see my crankbait coming to the boat right now? Make a couple casts of this, John, so we can get something on here. 
There goes my crankbait down into the tree area. Right there by the fish. Going back now. You can see it right there is my crankbait. So y'all can see. So y'all can see. Yeah, there's fish sitting on the tree. Y'all can see this square bill right here. Little bitty square bill. It, well, you know, it's a normal size square bill. Crush 50, 1.5 size. Y'all could see that, how small that looked on the screen. So that gives you a good indication of how big the fish are. And some of those dots, some of those blobs we've been seeing come through there are pretty darn good fish. Find you one over in that tree? Was that the one we were just, that one of the ones we were just seeing? No, it's the one right there. Boy, he ran straight at me. I think I'm gonna keep up with him. Good little fish. Good little fish, Maxfield. Thanks, sir. All right, guys, so what you can see here, there's a, there's a brush pile sitting out here, and there's a fish sitting right out here. Maybe that might be a fish right there, but you can see that brush pile right there. And uh, yeah, there that fish went. So his, that's definitely a fish moving around right there. They're kind of sitting up high in these brush piles. They're not really sitting down in the bottoms of them. Uh, there's one kind of low right there, but they're just all over the place. There's a few fish out there around these brush piles. Got him. Watched him eat it right on top of the brush on that live. Little bitty one. Probably. He's acting like crap. No, it's bass. Uh -huh. That was cool. He ain't as little as I thought he was. He ain't no biggin', but that was super cool just because I could see my crankbait come to the brush top. And I watched my crankbait hit that brush top and I watched that fish come right. See how they're sitting right see how they're sitting right in the top. There's another one in there right now sitting right in the top of that brush pile and I watched my crankbait come up to that brush pile and hit the top and then I watched him come out and flash on it and then my rod loaded up like here's the cool thing I saw that fish ow, ow, ow. I saw that fish bite my bait before I ever felt the load on my rod like I was like well it looked like he ate my bait but then I just kept reeling and it started loading up so very cool There's some fish on that brush pile right there. So what we got to do out here is just spot lock it. Now that's going to make my screen on my active target freak out and go all around. But about the best you can do when you have a little wind. We don't have too much wind. We got just enough to kind of mess you up out here and make it hard to hold the boat straight. About the best you can do is every once in a while check that brush pile, make sure there's fish on it, and then spot lock. And just know where that brush pile is and throw at it. Another tip that I do is I try to sit as much downwind with that brush pile as I can. That way, as the spot lock settles in and the troll motor kind of points into the wind, hopefully, at least every once in a while, if nothing else, you'll, you'll get a, gl a glimpse of your, your brush pile, which is kind of what we've got going on right now. Every once in a while, it'll scan by that pile and we can kind of see it. And it just did, and John said, man, there's some fish in there. And there is, there's some fish on that pile. It's out in front of the boat, about 40, 45, 50 feet out in front of the boat. We got a brush pot. It's got quite a few fish sitting around. So hopefully we can catch. They're not biting good. I'm gonna tell you what's going on is, is the lake's turning over, John. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no doubt we got dirty water. We got debris. Uh, just when you snap your line, like you just whip your line through the water, you can see the the filth and the junk in the water. We actually showed up on a day where this lake's turning over. If you bass fish during turnover, you know they don't bite. And we're actually seeing a lot of fish on the screen on the active target that aren't really reacting to i mean we're throwing crankbaits and weightless plastics and jigs and texas rigs and chatter baits and <laughs> spinner baits we've thrown everything at them and they're really not reacting uh very well but that's pretty normal in turnover that the bite's going to get a lot tougher like the fish are going to be more reluctant to bite for sure i want to explain to them exactly what a turnover is what a turnover is well so in the summertime the surface water heats up and the deeper water gets cooler and as the water begins to cool off as we transition into fall when the surface water basically equals the temperature of the bottom it turns and mixes up and what happens is all that water that's down at the bottom in the deeper water loses oxygen throughout the summer so it becomes deoxygenated water it also gets a bunch of kind of just muck and filth and debris and different stuff kind of settles down in that bottom area and when the lake turns over when the when the 
surface temperatures equal to the bottom or get colder and it flips it brings all that deoxygenated water and mixes it in with the good water it also brings all that nastiness debris and dirties up the water column you'll see different stuff floating around you know just leave old you know decomposed leaves and stuff that have been on the bottom forever will just all of a sudden be floating around the surface on lake fork you see a lot of those my zone sacks those jelly sacks mm -hmm. that are just these little microorganism colonies they just look like little jelly sacks you'll see those floating around um but we definitely got debris on the water we got turnover happening for sure i mean you can tell like i said when you run your like when i do that you can see a mud line in the water and it was just the dirtiness that's on the surface and we've had no significant rain in no. weeks there's no reason for the lake to be dirty whatsoever so it's definitely got these fish and, and the big thing that affects the fish negatively to me in my opinion is the deoxygenation you get the, the water that's had the oxygen not in it that's been hot at the bottom of the lake when that mixes in and now the oxygen level drops all of a sudden like that it makes those fish just feel terrible it'd be like a hey it'd be like one of us fat boys going up to the top of a mountain in Colorado, we'd probably feel pretty crappy without oxygen. <laughs> we wouldn't want to do much after that. So that's kind of what they're dealing with. There we go, got one of them. Got one of them fish we've been seeing out there to react. Pretty good fish too, golly. Boy, he didn't fight till he jumped right here at the boat and then he got after it, dude. I'm make another run, get out from that boat. Get out from that boat. Yep. No, I'll get him. I mean, I've just got 12 pound line and a medium rod, but <laughs> it's square bill rod. Let's try to keep him out of the trolling motor boat. He's wanting to stay under the boat. Well, I finally got one. To, how many times I thought that square bill crossed there, John? Before he reacted. I mean, it was a long time. And he just reacted. He's wearing it right on the outside, right on top of his head. Get up here, baby. Watch chunk. Nice fish, isn't it? But man, they're, they're just not, they're very reluctant to bite. I've been making the same exact cast over and over and over again. That is a really nice, I mean, it's not a huge fish, but that is a solid, solid fish. Well, he's in good shape for coming out of the end of summer. There's so much bait in this lake, though. They come out really good, so. So, you know, I think that's where your live scopes come in handy so much is you could come out here Absolutely. And, and fish this place and throw four or five ten times yeah there ain't no fish here but you've seen them on the live scope you know keep fish throwing here yeah keep throwing keep throwing it that was the deal we saw so many sitting around that brush pile and even scattered around in between us and the brush pile there were so many fish that i kept making that same cast same cast same cast and, and instead of picking up a, a dragon bait like we normally catch fish out here really well on a jig and a big worm and instead of doing that type of thing i picked up a square bill something more reactive it bounces off that brush makes them react and my last two fish have come on that and uh, but you're absolutely right john having the ability to see those fish on active target and the confidence to know they're there it becomes sight fishing right where you may spend an hour on an eight pounder when you're bed fishing because you can see it well now we can kind of do that throughout the year and in all depths of the water column because of this new technology i mean it's between the 360 like that you've seen the 360 today right like we can look and go oh well, there's a stump we didn't even know was there and then you scan over there and see one with the active target and it's just it's just a deadly combination of electronics it 100 if we came over here without that we came over here and fished this brush because we knew it was here. And, left. and we'd, we'd have drug a jig around for 10 or 15 minutes and bounced. Instead, now we've got a really good fish in the boat that we wouldn't have caught without that technology. It's really, really cool. There's still a bunch of them out there, right in there and there. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, we got, maybe we got them a little fired up, Johnny. Another chunk, another fatty. I'm gonna get your energy out. I know you're gonna give me some runs now. Oh, that's a good one, John. Look here, look here, look here. Get up here, baby. That's a tank. It's a little tank. That's a short tank. I mean, it's not a small fish, but oh, don't get me with them treble hooks. Tell you what we're gonna do. God, though, mighty, I'm about to get treble hooks in my hand. I'll yank it out. <laughs> I bet you would relish the opportunity. Man, this is so cool. We've seen a lot of fish out here on this spot. And I mean, I really feel like this is just a group of fish that we would have never, ever caught without this active target. That's a really heavy, heavy for his size fish right there. It's a good one. Oh, there he is. 
slapped at it once and came back and got it. Oh, it come off. Dad gum it. I never seen that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't see like, the bend in that rod. <laughs> get you one. Square bill fish. I'm going to throw on that drag a little bit, hand. That's another nice one. Dude, that might be the biggest one. Oh. That is the biggest one. <laughs> Freaking tub, dude. Freaking tub. Big Johnny Maxfield. That's a daggum stud, dude. I mean, a freaking tank. That's awesome. Hey, we got a pattern going now, huh? Yep. Got a little pattern on the square bill. You changed over, got the same square bill I was throwing? Awesome. Well, not too bad of a morning. Considering we're dealing with turnover conditions, the time of year that we're dealing with, I mean, you, like I said earlier, you guys know the deficient turnovers. It can be extremely tough. Hey, and as you guys saw when we stopped on the last rock pile, we actually stopped fishing right around 10 a.m. You can see the time on the Hummingbird 360 when we were on that last rock pile, but not a bad morning six seven eight fish something like that in a few hours this morning from about seven to ten uh, i'll take it but i 100 percent know without a doubt we would not have caught most of those fish without this technology it's such a great technology i think there's a lot of people that are curious out there about it and how to use it so we've kind of walked you through how we're using it. i've shown you how i'm using it to locate fish and to catch them so now let's break down the settings that i'm using to get those pictures because one thing about this new technology that's a little different than the old school sonar and side scan um, you got to adjust the settings a lot more even within that day i've been constantly adjusting these settings today to see the fish better see the structure better so let me show you how we're doing that all right guys so here's the lorenza active target screen hopefully the glare is not killing us too bad now that we got high skies in the sun but forward range i keep it on about 60 feet i'm still relatively inexperienced with this i haven't used as much as i should throughout the year but i'm keeping my forward range on 60 feet it's really easy to adjust all you gotta do is go here and then you can put it out to 100 heck you can put it out and you can see how the further out you go the less image you get right 80 see how my image is breaking up out there but at 60 I've got a pretty good image now that can be changed through your contrast settings I'll show you how to do that in a minute but I usually run it on about 60 feet if I'm close to something and I really want a good picture I'll knock it down to 40 boy you can see that big fish swimming right there hey John there's a big fish on a brush pile right here he's sitting right on our side he just went off the screen now but y'all see him right there but this is a little brush pile here here's another fish popping up back here a little bit you see just a few kind of swimming around that's one thing about bass guys they're going to move constantly so you constantly have to learn how to adjust this cone angle so that you're seeing them but we're setting it on 60 feet out let me put it back on 60. see that fish swimming right there look at that isn't that cool swimming right at us or maybe that's john's crankbait john is that your crankbait yeah, probably. no no we're looking over there that was a fish that wasn't your crankbait um sorry my buddy john's fishing behind me i'm getting distracted here let me focus in downrange I, I change as i go throughout the day based on where i'm fishing uh and downrange is going to definitely affect my sensitivity setting which is right below that my contrast setting i'm calling it sensitivity it's contrast is what it is so when i am in say 10 foot or less I typically run the contrast on plus eight. Now, one thing that I noticed this morning in the footage that we were shooting this morning was when we were over there where the, on the further in the lake where the, the wind is blowing, the wind is blowing, as you guys can see, the wind's blowing it over there. Well, that's where we were fishing this morning and that water's a lot dirty over there where that wind's been blowing in. In that situation, I had to turn my, my contrast up to like plus 12 over there it even had it up as high as plus 14 at times the dirtier the water was the higher i had to go on the contrast typically when i'm 10 foot or less i'm going to be using plus eight on my contrast when i get out deeper water 15 foot 20 foot i typically run it at plus 12. lake fork's been pretty clear here lately i've been running it at plus 12 on lake fork but the one thing that i've noticed is like i said the dirtier the water the higher the contrast so just think of it this way shallow the more you can see into the water shallow clear water you're going to need less contrast deeper water even in clear water you're going to need more contrast basically your visibility equals contrast the more you can see in the water the less contrast you need the less you can see in the water the more contrast you need so as you get deeper even in clear water you'll have to crank the contrast up or if the water is dirtier you'll have to crank crank the contrast up even in shallower water and even even higher in deeper water if it's dirty 
Noise rejection, I run all my Lowrance units with on noise rejection low, as you guys can see there. More options, okay, so what you can do, you can stop sonar, like if you're gonna go eat lunch at the Marine or something, it's good to stop sonar so that your deal's not pinging and, and, and you can actually create transducer problems if you let your sonar keep pinging while it's out of the water for an extended period of time. Don't use that very often, every once in a while I do. Pallet, they've got a selection of pallets. This uh, light amber one's the one I like the best. Number three, pallet number three, it's a light amber, but they've got several different options on here for you. Range grid. All that does is help you identify how far out objects are. So now that just gives you a, a, a better linear angle of how far out objects are. I don't use that. Uh, I guess I'm young enough. I still have good enough eyes. I can kind of see where things are. And, and I prefer to use it without the range. Stable view. So I'm honestly, if I'm being real with you guys, I'm not really sure what stable view does. But when I turn it off, my angle gets all wonky and crazy. I get a much better angle uh, on, on st when stable views turn on so I've been leaving it on and then on record video you can actually log what you're seeing on here but you have to put an SD card if I can get this open you have to log you have to stick an SD card in here you're gonna go with you're gonna want to go with at least about a 64 gig SD card or maybe even a 32 would work you're not gonna get a whole lot of recording time on 32 you're probably gonna get a couple hours maybe maybe hour and a half on a 32 gig if you have a 64 gig you can probably run three or four hours worth of footage off there um, but if you want to record video it's really easy you just hit that button it'll bring up an option when your sd card's in there on which file which slot you want to use select that and then you can record video so that's pretty much it one thing i really really like about this unit the settings are very simple there's not a whole lot to do to it you can come in here and adjust your range adjust your contrast set your noise rejection on low turn your stable view on and that's about all you have to do to operate this active target at a very high level now let's give you guys what i like to call an honest review when i say honest i mean honest i have no obligation to lawrence i did get a, a little bit of a deal on lawrence a team deal uh, a discount on grass a couple years ago I have not gotten any discount on the rants on these graphs. I have no dog in the fight when it comes to that. So I can be as honest as I want with you guys because I'm getting nothing from nobody when it comes to electronic pro staff deals. Uh, what I do have is an obligation to provide for my family on the water. Uh, no, I'm not a professional tournament angler, but I do make my living putting fish in the boat for customers and as well as putting fish on camera for you guys to watch. That's how I make my living. So when it comes to having the best technology and, and using it to the best of its ability, it, it is of utmost importance to me so i say all that so that you guys can understand what i'm about to tell you i like to think it's very believable it's, it's as real as i can get it and it comes from a perspective of a guy that needs this information to be correct so that being said i'm a really big fan obviously of these electronics like i said today we caught fish that we would not have caught without them is it perfect no is it better than garmin live scope i think that's the big question what's better active target or garmin live scope I think right out of the box, if you're like me and you're not very tech savvy, I, I need things to be simple. I need them to be easy to adjust. I'm not a technically smart guy at all. And I think there's a lot of fishermen out there like that. I think straight out of the box, put it on the boat, turn it on and go. I think the active target's a better unit. I've seen some Garmin units that have been tuned up and some of their pictures look better than what I see on active target. For me, that the Garmin's that I've been around were kind of like guys like me and they just put them on their boat and installed them and used them. The picture wasn't as good, not nearly as good as that is. And is it a perfect picture? No. Do you see every branch, every tiny branch on a brush pile all the time? No, especially not in stained or dirty water. The dirtier your water is, the worse your picture is going to be. That's just how it works. But the bottom line is I can clearly, clearly see structure and clearly see fish. It's very easy, as you guys saw us doing today, even just now when I was talking you through the settings, you saw those fish on the screen. It's very easy to identify those fish on the screen and when they're moving, when they're on the screen what direction they're going so it does the job and it's really really simple to operate so that's why i'm a big fan of it as far as things that i don't like one thing that i don't like is it seems like the cone is very narrow at times it becomes difficult sometimes it's extremely difficult and it's in a it's a learned skill right that's why guys like patrick walters are so good because they're better at this part than, than most of us are or really than anybody else is but keeping your bait on the screen making a cast and seeing your bait on the screen at times is extremely difficult 
keeping a fish on the screen at times is extremely difficult. I would like to see the future versions of this technology come with a wider cone. Uh, the deal is the Lowrance cone and Garmin cone are almost the same. I think Lowrance is a little bit narrower, but their cone angle is basically the same. So that's gonna be a problem on both units. That's about the only negatives that I can come up with. Other than that, it works amazing. It's super effective as we showed you guys today. Uh, if you've got the money to spend on it, it's definitely worthwhile. If you got the money to have a 360 and a live sonar, Active Target or Garmin, um, you got to do it. I mean, you just got to do it. That combination is unbelievable because like when we started today, we pulled up to a stump and we could see is a tree sticking out of the water. Pulled up that tree, saw fish on there. John caught the first fish off that. Then we were going to another stump, but hey, on the 360, we see one over here to the left. John just pitches over there to that and catches the second fish off that stump. And you can just see things under the water that you would never see. Trees that are there, laydowns, brush piles that you didn't know existed, somebody else put there. You can see everything under the water with 360. Then you can turn your active target on it, identify whether or not fish are located on that cover or structure and actually watch yourself make a cast to it. It's an unbelievable combination. It is completely changing the way that the people at the top level bass fish. There's so many guys that, I mean, there's careers that are being rejuvenated because of this. Guys that were not great offshore are becoming a lot better offshore because this is a lot like shallow fishing. It's target oriented. Guys that are great shallow water fishermen are usually a lot target fishermen. They're very good at making accurate casts to cover. They're very good at reading that cover, presenting baits, and, and tricking fish in to bite it near cover. Well, now they can do that in deeper water with this technology. It, it's, it's just an unbelievable uh, advancement that we've made in bass fishing. And, and I just, I know I'm kind of droning on about it, but I just can't get over how good and how easy it makes it seem at times. Don't get me wrong, there's times when you see fish and you can't catch them and it's frustrating as hell. But there's times when it feels like you're cheating with this kind of technology. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video, man. I certainly hope this helps you guys make decisions on your electronics. I hope it helps you use your electronics more efficiently and get, catch more and bigger fish. That's what we've always been about at this channel is helping people catch more and bigger fish and loving our fellow man. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, hey, the baits we used today, 6-inch fishing square bill was really the breadwinner. Uh, I, I believe John caught one on a 6-inch jig. Uh, I caught one on a wacky worm early before we started using Active Target, uh, but really the breadwinner today was at six inch square bill. This time of year, summer to fall transition, turnover times, a square bill should be a staple in your repertoire. The small ones, this is the Crush 50X in the shad drone color was the one we were using today. Uh, that's probably my favorite square bill for this time of year. Go over to sixinchfishing.com, which is linked in the description below. Go check that out, order them up. Be sure you use that code, Your Lake Fort Guide. You'll get a 10% discount on all orders. Also, the Fish Life app. If you're fishing any of these lakes around East Texas, we've got fresh updates all the time. Hey, we're here to help you through this tough turnover month of September, right? So we've got fresh updates just got done at the beginning of the month. We'll have more fresh updates at the beginning of October. Go check out the lakes we have available on Fish Life app, linked in the description as well. Find the lake that you want to fish. Be sure you subscribe to it. Get the best information that's ever been offered in the world of bass fishing. John. Yes, sir. It's not that late. <laughs> no. We could go catch some more fish. I'll tell you what, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Y'all get to clicking them lakes. Y'all get to clicking. We'll get back to fishing, and we'll see you next time right here on your Lake Fork Guide.